Hey, it's Webs here with a new Hearthstone deck, this time using the new legendary Prince Renathal, so we can actually use 40 cards and start at 40 HP. And the deck that we're doing this with is Silence Priest, where we're actually abusing Lady Prestor so we can actually get a bunch of big dragons. This was kind of inspired by the Prestor druid decks that are currently floating around in the metagame. However, this is a type of deck that I've been wanting to do since the Sunken City set, as I did want to use Lady Prestor again, and I've been trying to figure out a way to do it with Silence Priest, but until recently, it was a little bit too slow to actually see any play. And with the ability to actually start with 40 HP allows it to actually be quite playable. Across the 20 games that I played, I won 11 out of the 20, which gave me around a 55% win rate with the deck. And for the Mulligan Guide, you're basically looking for cards that will be early game minions, such as Iron Deep Trog, Peasant, or Handmaiden, if you have a lot of cheap spells in your open hand. Other cards that are really good to keep in your open hand are things like Call of the Grave, or even Whispers of the Deep, if you have a selfish shellfish in your opening hand or if you have both a holy and shadow spell light maw nether drake is really good to also keep in your opening hand and with that all being said let's look at some game hey time for a game against mage this opening hand actually doesn't look too bad especially because we have a lot of draw power we have three cheap spells probably just going to keep everything here to be honest okay we're going to get that additional 10 hp right now Okay, so we don't have anything we can really do. We could use the Illuminate here to see what we can get. Uh, the Drake is probably the best bet, even if it isn't a spell to get discounted on. I just want to have some type of AoE. Sadly, we don't have a Light spell now in our hand, which is a little bit frustrating, but oh well. We do have the Thrive in the Shadows to get us a Light spell. Going for Kadeem here. Condemn. We still don't know what type of mage deck this is. They're just pinging our face. I'm assuming they're not probably mech mage at this point. Okay, so we could in theory use Call of the Grave just to trigger the handmaidens. Or we could use the coin to trigger the handmaidens. Uh, let's use the coin to trigger them. See what we can actually draw. Okay, there's a shadow spell and... So fish, which is actually really nice to see both of those cards right there. Okay, so they're probably big spell mage. Or not. Um or they just got really unlucky. That's possible too. Well, we could drop the shellfish if we really feel like it. It's not like they probably can deal with it, unless they drew into first flame. Actually, if they drew into first flame there, we probably just made a huge mistake. Okay, Venomous Scorpid. Okay, so they didn't actually kill our minion. We do have the Whispers to actually get rid of both of their minions, which is really good. Okay, so we're just going to be able to do 7 damage to their face, put down a minion. Okay, we're going to put down Prince Renathal just to put down a minion. Okay, so we could have actually used that this turn, but I think that would have only gave us one mana, so we're not going to worry too much about it. Could draw it into more additional cards with the Handmaiden next turn. Okay, they're going to use Wildfire, so they're probably big mage with some hero power package. Okay, they still don't kill this shellfish which is actually really good for us especially because we do have thrive in the shadows right now we could use thrive to see if we can get his jaran ritual which we sadly do not grabbing probably the call of the grave actually devouring plague allows us to almost kill their minion then we could use condemn to kill it then we can Gain three mana back, put down a handmaiden to draw more cards. I'm trying to cycle through the deck as quickly as humanly possible. Light bomb would have been nice if we're not ahead on the board. Okay, there's the rune orb. 
Uh, are they actually going to be able to kill our entire board? If they can't, we're actually in a really good position. They don't have enough mana to do anything here. So we do have the AoE silence for next turn. Okay, Lady Prestor as a top deck is really nice. No need to actually use the Starfish to unfreeze them if we got the Lady Prestor as a top deck. Okay, they actually are going to be able to do a bunch of damage here. Luckily for us, they only are able to trigger the Honorable Kill once. Shocked they actually didn't just use their hero power there. Oh, I guess they're going to use it on our face instead. Okay, Shivering Sorceress probably discounts something big. Uh, Luminate is pretty nice. We can draw a card, might as well, see what we can grab. Switcheroo is really good, especially in this situation. Two Fey Elementals, okay. Uh, might as well put down the Trog, use the Luminate here. Primordial Drake is probably the safest bet. Because if they put out a bunch of minions, then we should be able to instantly deal with them. Okay, so... Light Bomb actually deals with most of this board, too. Primordial Drake should pop everything. We do have the Condemn to back that up, heal a little bit. Just need something like a Gazakazan to reset our deck. That would be really fun. Okay, they're going to use Arcane Overflow, which gives them a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, Malagos actually is a really fun card here. Let's use Light Bomb first, put down the Fairy Drake, and then pass the turn back. They can't actually target it, which is really nice for us. There's Queen Ajara. Actually, what could we get out of our deck that would actually give us an answer? Or a perfect answer, I should say. Because we have 4 damage on board. We need... 15 damage otherwise. And that actually helps a lot. Always will take a heal if we possibly can get it. Um, Legionnaire allows us to buff up our hand. Let's draw as many cards as humanly possible here. See what we can get. Okay, the Shadow Elemental Spirit does 3 to face. We can unsilence this. And then use Whispers of the Deep to try to get rid of Queen Ajara. Doesn't, but oh well. Then we can just go face and pass the turn back. Alright, so we have more than enough damage on board if all of our minions survive. But otherwise, we need to have 8 damage. They're going to kill 2 of our minions. So we're down to needing 4 damage. Okay, not 4 damage anymore. Okay, so that helps. Uh, Garden's Grace is actually really good, because that's 5 free damage there, and then Shadow Spirit plus Nether Drake is lethal. Alright, time for a game against Hunter. Gonna mulligan away the two Devouring Plagues, keeping the Handmaiden. Okay, so we got a Light uh, Drake, which isn't actually that bad if we had access to the Devouring Plagues that we just mulliganed away, but oh well. The switcheroo is actually pretty decent. It does have a chance of getting us into Lady Prestor quickly, so. Okay, Iron Deep Trog. That's actually pretty nice as a turn one top deck. They're just going to uh, trade in their Doggy Biscuit. There's a Cleric. Okay, Cleric doesn't do anything for us yet, especially because they haven't done any damage to us. We're just going to attack their face and pass the turn back. Okay, so Peasant doesn't technically do anything yet. We might actually just want to drop it, since I don't think they can instantly kill it. 
Though we could use Switcheroo here too to draw two minions out of the deck. Just gonna use Switcheroo. <laughs> Those two actually don't swap their HP pools at all. That's actually kind of annoying, but it's alright. Okay, we can put down the Peasant, heal up a little bit, draw a card here. They're sadly going to be able to get the Peasant killed next turn. We're going to grab the Whispers of the Deep, just hoping we get some really good minion. Though we do have both a Light and a Dark spell in the hand, or a Light and Shadow spell, I mean. So we do have the Drake online now. Okay, so if we use the Drake here, we get rid of two out of the three minions. And then we can just pass the turn back. We could have actually destroyed the last minion with Whispers of the Deep, but I'd rather save that for next turn if necessary. Okay, so they're going to be able to kill all of our minions here. There's a King Crush. That is not something I want to see yet. Okay, we need to deal with that pretty quickly. Let's see what we can get here. Oh, the... Burning Blade actually is probably not a bad solution. We can uh, silence it, which might not be a good idea, but I think I'm going to do it anyways. Okay, so it's a 5 HP. We have one more damage that we need to do with it. Okay, Devouring Plague is probably what we're going to grab. This should guarantee death on Crush next turn, but we did have to take 16 damage for it, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, now we no longer guarantee damage on it. Let's use Thrive in the Shadows to test. Luckily for us, it isn't anything bad. This is a mistake from my past self. Oh, maybe not. We do have access to Zyrilla now. And I don't think that technically was necessary, but it does allow us to heal up a little bit before doing some damage to their face. They're going to bounce this back, which is going to be annoying, but oh well. Okay, another selective breeder. Luckily for us, we don't have to play around Crush because it was drawn out of the deck already. Okay, there's tracking. Just going to draw three cards here. See what we can actually get. Switcheroo, okay. Let's see if we can... Oh, Selfish is really fun. Okay, they're going to use Ramming Mount. They're going to also play K9 Neutron times 2. Interesting. They don't have any 1-cost cards at the bottom of their deck. I wonder how many 1-cost cards they're actually running in that deck. If we use Whispers on the Shellfish, we have 7 damage there. And then we do have Condemn too. Let's see what we can get here and how low we can get everything. Okay, so we're actually in a pretty good position getting rid of most of their minions. Then we can just heal up a little bit more. Okay, so they do have the hero card down, which means those two secrets are going to be a little bit annoying to deal with. We can draw three cards, see what we can get. Okay, a Gift of the Naru. Gift of the Naru heals up our shellfish pretty well. Okay, so Lady Prestor is actually something that we need. Though I don't know if I want to play her this turn. We can use the Nether Drake plus a Condemn to get rid of everything here. I think that's actually going to be the play. Oh, I guess not. Okay, there's going to be two more. We'll put down the idol and the peasant just to put some board presents. We have two taunts now. Next turn we should be able to wipe their board no matter what here though. Okay, maybe not anymore. Actually no, we might still be able to. We do have the starfish in our hands so we could in theory silence everything. Oh, and we do have a uh, light bomb too which is actually kind of cool. Let's attack into a few of their minions, since those are going to die anyways. And then we're going to silence everything. Okay, we everything down, getting rid of most of their minions. Then we can use Devouring Plague to finish them off. I 
Okay. How many of those sabers are they going to actually have in their deck? Okay, so Lady Prestor is going to go down here. We're going to use Luminance, grabbing the Alexstrasza, attacking their minion, using Prince Renathal just to put down a body. Main reason I wanted to get Alexstrasza there is because, in theory, if we can actually get additional copies with the Starfish and a Ritual, that would be really funny, but it isn't technically necessary. You're going to give their bear Rush, so they'll be able to instantly trigger its Death Rattle if they really feel like it. But I guess they don't. They're just going to allow us to do it instead. Okay, we're just going to use Alexstrasza, hit their face. Use the Starfish, use Condemn, and get rid of most of their minions. Attack their other minion. Trigger their secret. Okay, they're going to shuffle Doggy Biscuit back into the deck. There's another secret, which means it's probably Explosive Trap. And they, of course, are going to get a Huffer to get rid of one of our minions here. Makes a lot of sense going after the Alex Straza because in theory, that's just going to be a lot of damage. So this is a big misplay from them. They should have attacked the opposite way, but oh well. Well, we can just trigger the secret. It is Freezing Trap and gives us back one of the minions that we would have preferred in our hand anyways. Okay, there's a Saber. Summon Pit gives them a Taunt. And they have no minions in their deck, which is really good for us. Okay, going to grab Call of the Grave. See what we can generate here. Bajar and Sentinel is actually pretty decent in this scenario, just because it's another Taunt in between our face and them. Healing my face, and then... Attacking the minion. Okay, Hellmaster Shaw, which will give their Huffer Rush that didn't actually need it, but they of course got an R Huffer. Okay, we do have the two Ajarn Rituals, so we could heal up ourselves or our minion. Probably should have went for the minion. Oh well. Going to get two additional copies, and hopefully they don't have an answer for all three. And then we can just go face. Okay, they generate that, which is probably the worst one they could have got. So they have two answers for two minions, but we still have a third, so we won here. Okay, time for a game against Shaman. Iron Deep Trog is pretty nice for a turn one play. Probably going to keep one of the Desperate Prayers just to keep it, so we have... Oh, I guess Mulliganing both away doesn't matter either. Keeping one would have been fine. This is not what I want to see, especially because we have no target for the Whispers of the Deep. Okay, so they're another Prince Renathal deck. They're going to use Command the Elements. Just going to put the Trog down. Okay, they'll use Sleep Breaker. We don't have an answer for the Sleep Breaker yet. Uh, we're going to coin to see if we can generate anything cool here. The Berserker actually is not that bad in this scenario. <laughs> the one deck that would actually not mind generating that. It isn't a selfish shellfish, but it's pretty close. Okay, so we only need to do one damage. There's Switcheroo, see what we can get. Lady Prestor this early is really nice. We just have to keep stalling for a little bit longer. Okay, the Wild Paw Cavern is going to generate a minion each turn. Okay, Desperate Prayer doesn't do anything yet. We can just heal. Pass the turn back again. They're going to freeze us, do some damage. Then we should be able to use a, a Whispers plus the Berserker here. The second Trog, that doesn't actually do us much. And try to get rid of at least some of the minions and it doesn't hit anything to kill it we can heal up a little bit we're only healing them for one huh someone's actually using farsight i actually really like the card i have really fond memories of it just didn't think it was that good in the current meta i guess if you're playing a 40 card deck you need all the draw power you can get okay condemn actually 
gets rid of most of the board here. Then we can use our silence to get it unfrozen. Use the gift of the Naru to draw in our card. Heal up a little bit more. Hit their face. They are sadly going to be able to kill our 5-7. It's actually really impressive, though it does make them two lower mana next turn. Or is it only one? I can't remember. Well, we do have Lady Prestor just to slam down. We could do the Trog too if we really felt like it, just for the additional board presence. Okay, they're going to use Geyser, lowering it to zero. I forgot we actually got it off of switcheroo so that's kind of disappointing okay so what did we grab well we can draw three cards here see what we get a second ritual luminate and condemn that's actually kind of interesting oh i just realized their quest line probably going to put alex draws at the top of the deck to be honest because if we can put her on the top we have access to Three eight eights on turn nine, which is actually really nice. And if they could actually complete their quest line, then it might be a problem, but I very much doubt they can. At least not in this turn. It's a shame because that quest line doesn't really have that much support currently in the metagame or in standard right now. Trying to make it actually work is almost impossible. Okay, there's Alex Straza don't have a dark spell you can use alex Straza just to go face and then use the two rituals to get two additional copies okay so we have 24 plus 3 damage on board which means we actually have perfect lethal as long as they just go face here and it looks like they are going to they're going to freeze our board, but at least we have the starfish, so we're in a perfectly good position. And now we just win. All right, now that we're through the game, so let's discuss my final thoughts of the deck overall. Overall, I really enjoyed playing this deck. However, there was one downside with the deck. Games went on forever, most of them actually went on for 20 minutes, which is one reason why I really can't recommend a deck like this unless you want a really slow, grindy game deck, then this is perfect for you. It does have a very good win rate, at least in my experience with a 55% win rate, which was higher than I actually expected, but it turns out if you can get a bunch of really cheap big dragons early on in the game, you just end up winning the game out right instantly. With that all being said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, bye-bye.